It's 4 a.m. and we're heading out Lake Worth Inlet. We have a small weather window to cross to the Bahamas. It's forecasted to be 10 to 15 knot winds from the west northwest and one to two foot seas, but it's only gonna last for today and tomorrow's the wind's gonna come strong out of the north, so we wanna get it across the Gulf Stream before then. Ideally, we would have cruised all the way down the coast to Miami and crossed to Bimini, but with such a short weather window and the ocean just coming down, we decided to just come down the Lake Worth Inlet and we'll motor down the coast this morning for about an hour and then we'll cross directly over to West End and check in there. Super excited to get back over to the Bahamas. We haven't been there in almost five years on our own boat. And we can't wait to spend a lot of time cruising through a lot of the islands that we've never been to before. We're motoring about 10 miles down the coast before we make a hard turn to port and cross the Gulf Stream. The sun will be up in 20 or 30 minutes, so I'm just rigging some Bonita strips on some lures and getting them in the water in preparation for hopefully a morning bite. Uh, brand new lures we have never used before. We got a Wahoo lure out, and we got a, another lure, <laughs> and hopefully we catch a fish. Like two thirds across the Gulf Stream. We got some lines in the water and we actually were able to sail the whole way, which I didn't think we were gonna do. I thought the wind was gonna be too light to be able to sail, but we've been sailing like downwind with the screecher and uh, mainsail the whole time. And it's been a little bit bumpy, but overall pretty nice crossing. We're just approaching the Bahama Bank in front of us and West End where we're gonna check in. And we got a ship right off our port side right now. No fish yet, but we still got time. It has been almost five years since we have been back in our favorite spot ever and we have just officially entered Bahamian waters and we are so excited. The plan this year is to get as far out and check out all the islands that we haven't seen yet. Rum, San Salvador, where else? I can't think of any of the other names but more of the out islands. We're going to try to dive, we're going to try to surf, we're going to try to do things that we haven't done before. And we are so excited to bring you along with us. First step, we have to check in. Unfortunately, we did not catch anything on our way over. A little bummed about that, but still plenty of time to catch fish. <laughs> but we are ready. And I am just so excited to jump in the water. Like, I cannot tell you how long I have been waiting to jump off the front of the boat into crystal clear, warm blue water. And that moment is almost here. How are you feeling? Super excited. Can't wait to check in and I mean, we're here. 
just across the Gulf Stream. It was like a weird little window that we had, and it was west northwest winds, which you don't really want to cross the Gulf Stream and anything out of the north. But luckily, it was west enough where it didn't kick up the Gulf Stream too bad. Um, and it was a little stronger than expected. expected. I, I was expecting 10 to 15 knots the whole way. And we had 10 to 15 most of the way, but a lot of the time it was 15 to 20, um, which was a little bit stronger. So 15 to 20 knots in the Gulf Stream. It's out of the north, can make the Gulf Stream really nasty and kick up some short, steep waves. Um, so luckily it wasn't that bad. It was relatively calm crossing. Um, and now it's just beautiful. Tomorrow we're going to get a big front coming through, so some hard north wind. So it's a good thing we got across the Gulf Stream and we can find some sheltered water to either anchor in or sail in in the lee um, tomorrow. But we'll see. And this video will be like one or two weeks late, but Christmas was literally yesterday and preparing for this trip was like a oh. frenzy because we have all of our family, all of our friends in town. We hadn't been in, in, in my hometown in like six, seven months. So we wanted to see everyone. We wanted to enjoy the holidays, but we were also prepping for two and a half months away. So we were, there was just a lot of things moving, but we got to enjoy our time with all of our favorite people. And we're so excited we were able to sneak into that last little weather window because um, we have no idea when we're going to get another one. Luckily, our family got to enjoy one last day with us. They cruised from Jupiter down to Palm Beach. Beautiful evening sail. And then we said farewell to them at Selfish Marina. And now we're here and we have a stowaway. I don't know if Billy told you, but his mom is going to be spending a little bit of time with us. And we're so excited to have her and show her what it's like over here. different check-in process this time from last time they have like websites called click to clear 5 a.m. this morning when we were just heading out the inlet I was on the laptop um, doing the whole click to clear thing and that made customs super easy they just uh, you can print out your cruising permit directly from it or they because I did it so late they printed it out for me um, the website was a little tedious and tricky our future brother-in-law Brian gave us some a tutorial on how to navigate the uh, website seamlessly. And do you have to use that website in order to I, He said you do. Brian said you do. But there Brian. wasn't like two lines in there, one that... No. I, there was no line. Yeah. I, there was just a lot of people standing in the big group. You have a pencil. we got to do immigration still, which is what we're doing now. Thank you. Luckily, it was a relatively uneventful check-in process, and we decided just to drop the hook in protected waters and get some rest so that we could wake up early and continue sailing the next morning. Okay, drop it. It's the next morning and it's a hard north wind just as forecasted so we're going to sail on the south side of Grand Bahama Island in the lee of the land so it's nice and calm but still right on the edge of some really deep water so hopefully we can catch some fish. <laughs> Stop there, stop there. I think it's Blackfin. Yeah, Blackfin, hold it. Here, you want me to get that little net? Oh no, it's Bonita. Right. Why are they so heavy? They're strong. Oh, don't run. Oh, man. Do you guys keep Bonita? Um, we could, so don't that's... Don't stop me. Oh. Dude, man, you should have been a lot bigger for that fight. We 
caught our first fish. Actually, my mom reeled it in. We're gonna flame him up. I'm also gonna use the skin uh, and cut some strips with leaf for uh, to put on the lure. What'd you catch? A bonita. Well, we thought it was a bonita, as you can tell by my extreme excitement. But upon further investigation, we realized it was actually a skipjack tuna. And the very first fish. Many more to come. Woo! I thought for sure that was the. Oh, mahi. I thought for sure it was so heavy. Um, they're little fighters. Thank you. They're little fighters. We're going to try it. We're going to try it. Later that night, Sierra made her first ever sushi roll. Made my first ever sushi roll. Which was absolutely delicious. Okay, guys, it's another day. We're cruising from... Grand Bahama to the berries. We're in deep, deep water, perfect water for fishing. We have all the lines out. However, there's a chance we are not gonna catch anything. So in the hopes of this making us catch something, I'm going to take chicken out for dinner because if I do, then maybe we'll catch something. But if I don't, then there's no way we're gonna catch something and then we're not gonna have anything for dinner. So let's take out some of the chicken that I vacuum sealed. So our goal for now is to get to the islands that we haven't been to. So these next couple days are just going to be long travel days. Um, but hopefully on these long travel days, we at least catch a fish. Well, after a couple long sailing days east, we didn't catch any fish, but we finally made it to the out islands. I have two things that I want to get done that I didn't quite get done before we left Florida, but they're high priority. One of them is very high. One of them's kind of high. And the first one is this guy this is our pre-filter for the dinghy our onboard filter um just filters everything before it gets into the outboard engine just makes it easy to inspect to see if we have any water in there or easy to change if we do get any dirty fuel way easier to change than the onboard fuel filter the existing one on the dinghy is getting all corroded so it's time to uh, replace it and we want to do this because our dinghy is like our suv around here we use it for spearing and uh, getting around and exploring and everything so we want to have a reliable uh, filter on there and also I'm starting to smell a tiny bit of gas in there so I think that it's so corroded that um, we're starting to develop a little bit of a leak so that's really bad you don't want air in the fuel system our next priority item is this sucker so we plan to catch a ton of fish and spear and this is going to be our fillet station back here And Magnus set us up with this fillet table and an awesome rod holder mount that gets nice and tight in there, so it's nice and secure. Um, but I need an additional support to this. This fillet table is made to have two supports. Um, so I have one on this side, and then what I think I'm going to do is mount the stainless steel pole from here, diagonally across to here or here or something. So additional support to make this more stable. And then as soon as that wind dies, we can get out and start uh, catching some fish and filleting some fish. So let's get this fuel filter on. set it up the same exact way that we have the existing one set up so we'll put the plugs on this side and inlet on this side and the to the outboard on that side so we have some Permatex thread sealant made for meant for fuel and like hydraulic lines and stuff so we'll do a little bit of this
the existing one. Definitely some um, like rust and stuff on the filter itself, which that's easy enough just to change out. That's what it's meant for, right? But this is seems to be aluminum and this seems to be mild steel and these are brass so dissimilar metals and you can see like all the powder coating or paint or whatever is coming off the aluminum um so just safer to swap the whole thing out just don't want to develop any air leaks in here or here or anywhere else We got the fuel filter on the dinghy. Our next project is the our magna magna fillet table. And I'm just positioning the rod holders exactly where I want them. I want to have two fish cleaning stations. One as like a um, we're anchored. We came back from spear fishing. We're playing a fish on anchor station. And the other one being like an offshore fillet station. So we're a little more in the boat, locked into the boat and uh, we don't have to go all the way out here on the swim step to clean the fish. So here's the first one. I think that's perfect. Again, I'm gonna add a little supporting arm there, but this is it. We're kind of low to the water. Most of our fish blood and guts will go on to the, just the last swim step and into the water as well. And yeah, just nice, nice station here. And then our next one's going to be up here so that when our lifelines are on, it'll be right here. So we'll have a little bit more blood and fish guts going on to the steps down here, but at least it won't really come into the boat. And you don't have to go over the lifelines to be playing a big mahi or whatever that we catch offshore when we're trolling. So we'll put a rod holder. We'll move this one down to right here so that we could plug that one in. But now I gotta make my cross member mount. complete this lower one is at least so I got this little support arm with a couple little quick release pins into this uh, like rail mount this is called like a jaw slide mount um, cool so we could be filleting fish right here we have our little knife holders and all our drainage can go right off the back I'm excited now what do we need we need some fish should we go try to get something? We're 
we're just getting all our spear fishing gear ready some of this stuff we haven't used in a long well i guess most of it we haven't used in a long time but i was just able to get this old tip off i wasn't sure if i'd be able to so we're gonna put a new tip on this one there we go put a little loctite on this You guys, I don't think I could accurately explain to you how long we've been waiting to finally jump in and go diving again in the Bahamas. And today is finally the day. Woo! We are so excited, like jumping in this water. Mm -hmm. Although it is January, so it is cold. Um, cold not for cold for some of you guys, but cold for the Bahamas. So we are going to be wearing wetsuits, but we are jumping in. Woohoo! <sighs> haven't put this on in, man, we haven't, I haven't put this on in years. Years. It feels like yesterday we were in the U.S. Virgin Islands during the very beginning of the height of COVID and... We were, I was wearing this like every single day. We were catching massive lobster. That was 2019. Spring of late, yeah, late spring of 2019. It is now 2024. No, oh yeah, wow, jeez. That's so scary. That feels like yesterday, doesn't it? Kind of. It feels like forever ago. I mean, in a way it feels like forever to go, but also in a way like, I, it doesn't feel like that long ago I put this wetsuit on. We're going and I've been having a lot of ear issues for the past few years um, so I'm really hoping that it's not going to affect my diving. That's been my one fear whenever I like I've gone to a couple different ENTs. My one fear, my favorite thing in the entire world is to free dive. Please just make it so I can always free dive. So it's acting up today of course the one day that I want to go in. So fingers are crossed that I can clear and I don't have major ear pain. I don't know if you guys remember, but many, many, many moons ago, we had an incident where we were spearfishing and Jetty jumped off the boat and she was missing and we thought she got eaten by a shark. <laughs> that was a mighty long swim. She then lost her spearfishing privileges, but today we have the big door open. We're not gonna go for very long. We haven't done this in a really long time. It's gonna be super short. So we're just gonna kind of bring the dinghy with us and keep an eye on her 100% of the time rather than shutting the door and leaving her in and being sad. So we're just gonna be extra, extra careful. The moment I've been waiting for.
fish beast. I need to work on my aim. Me too. My hand keeps slipping. You gotta get your hand up to the grip. I can't reach that far. Yeah, you can. And then I fail. I've got to back. Sierra's 18th line fish. <laughs> She's looking for conk. Oh yeah, how's that play table working? Good, perfect spot. You did a good job, my dear. What'd we catch? We cleaned the reef today and we practiced our aim, which is apparently very bad currently. But at least we got some dinner. Can't go wrong with lionfish. We do good and we feed ourselves. It was definitely a good little warm up. Yeah, and they're like, sorry dudes, but they're not the smartest fish in the sea and they are so easy to like shoot that. It was good practice. Lionfish are invasive species. They are venomous and they absolutely annihilate reefs because they eat all of the um, natural juvenile fish that are on the reef so then they can't grow up and then we're lacking all of our our fish and they have no natural predators right? yeah nothing likes them except they do taste very good so there's been a lot of like derbies that have been going on to try to like clean up the reefs but they also produce so fast <laughs> so we have to be very careful because these are all venomous the tips of them the tops are all venomous so i normally cut off the pecs and with scissors and then just try to fillet it super careful with gloves. The meat's not bad, the meat's delicious. It's just filleting it that's a little dangerous. I think it, the table will look crooked, huh? I gotta, I gotta straighten it out. We're doing some coconut crusted lionfish here. Just getting this mixture ready. We're gonna do some cauliflower, cause that's already starting to go bad. And sweet potatoes. And that's dinner in an hour when the sweet potatoes are done. Mm. Yikes. No, I put them in a while ago, so it shouldn't be too long. Yeah. Yo, baby. Ooh, hoo, 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 yummy. Coconut crusted lionfish, yeah, lobster baby. tail, and cauliflower, and a sweet potato. Okay, guys, this is just day one. We're gonna be here for two and a half months, and we can't wait to bring you with us. Anything else? I'm just happy to be here. Happy New Year. <laughs>